Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this really impactful and I would say probably historic summit. Um, and I want to thank you also for giving me a really great dinner table topic of conversation with my three school-aged children. I'm sure you can guess where that conversation led quickly. But, um, you know, truly I was really happy to share with them because, as you know, kids are learning about climate change in school and they're worried about it. They're pretty knowledgeable. They pick up on things quickly. Um, I was happy to share with them, they didn't know this fact, but that 30%, you all already know this, 30% of California's methane emissions come from our livestock and our dairies. California dairy industry is the number one in the nation, which I will never miss an opportunity to ring that bell. Um, and I wanted to really emphasize with my kids that California beef and dairy, we feed not just the people in California, we feed the rest of the United States, and we feed people across the world. And when we talk about feeding people across the world, we have to acknowledge that our population is growing. We are looking at 9 billion people on this planet by 2040. It's a lot more people to feed than we already have. But not only that, We've got some good news, right? We have some economies in developing countries that are growing in strength. We have people that were in poverty that are now able to achieve a higher quality of life, which means higher quality of nutrition. And in a lot of cultures, that means animal protein. So that's all good news, right? We want people coming out of poverty. We want them eating California fruits, vegetables, beef, dairy, and nuts, for sure. But this means that our methane emissions issues aren't going away anytime soon. But luckily, in California, and yes, in many other countries as well, but I like to talk about California. In California, our dairies and our ranchers, who are so good, at producing high quality meat and dairies are also leaders in environmental stewardship. Our dairies and ranchers are already taking full advantage of the technology and the tools that are available right now to help minimize methane emissions. Now, I found this really kind of inspiring and hopeful and exciting and, and optimistic. But what do you think my kids took away from this conversation? That for two days, full-grown, highly educated adults sat in a room and talked about cow burps and got paid while they did it. Now, if enteric emissions, the science around enteric emissions, doesn't attract more young people to the STEM sciences, I don't know what will. So thank you for the topic. Thank you for inspiring young people to come and study STEM and be a part of these solutions. But jokes aside, and I know you've heard them all when it comes to enteric emissions, this really has been an incredibly productive summit. We are so grateful for the time of all of the individuals who participated in our panels, who talked about their work and their research. We are so grateful that you have dedicated your careers to studying enteric fermentation and that, that, cross, that crosswalk with climate change. I am so grateful also for the people in this room who are here in learning mode. I think to, to come into an incredibly challenging and complicated topic like this, to be willing to engage with an open mind is really important to broadening this partnership, right? To broadening it beyond the immediate stakeholders. We need to bring more people into this conversation. Now, when Dean Dillard and I talked about doing a summit like this last year, I don't think we expected to be able to pull together such a meaningful, a comprehensive summit on this topic. So I am so grateful for Dean Dillard. I am grateful to the staff at the CLEAR Center and for our own staff at CDFA for putting in all this work to making the summit a success. And it has been. The past two days have really provided a wealth of information from what's going on nationally and internationally in terms of research, exploring future opportunities for expanding our knowledge, 
talking about compliance protocols for feed, product safety, efficacy, supply chain drivers, you covered an incredible amount of topics in just two days. And this information is the foundation that we need to achieve our climate goals for the animal ag sector, not just in California, but really across the world. Because that's what's behind so much of this work, right? It's climate change. This is the single most powerful, natural, and societal driver that we have experienced in our lifetimes. We are still recovering from that whiplash of three to four years of drought to then 13 atmospheric rivers. Our Sierras are full of this beautiful snowpack, right? Like that is our biggest natural reservoir. We can't celebrate too much about that because in a couple of weeks, temperatures are gonna go up and the big melt is gonna start. This means that our rivers, our tributaries, our water conveyances throughout the, the, the Sierra region leading into the Central Valley, they're not prepared for this volume of water and we can pretty much expect to see some historic flooding in the Central Valley. So we can't lose sight of this big picture, right? We're preparing for floods, but we also need to remember that just last summer, we had a 10-day heat wave that broke nearly 1,000 temperature records in the West. Since 1895, we have seen an increase in temperature by two and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And of the largest wildfires, the most destructive wildfires that this state has ever seen in 70 years, those happened over a two-year period, 2020 and 2021. But climate change is about so much more than drought, than floods, than high temperatures, than wildfires. It's really a combination of all of these things with the added element of unpredictability and extremes. We are seeing these things in extremes now. And that's why at CDFA, we're really trying to take the long view with our agricultural community. And in particular, we have spent the last decade or so really trying to grow our suite of climate smart agriculture programs. We know that our role in government is to help and to support our farmers adapt to the changing climate. And this includes everything that we have talked about, that you all have talked about here at this summit. Now in California, I think it's been said before, but we've got this really ambitious goal of being carbon neutral by 2045. And to help us get there, Governor Newsom signed a $54 billion climate budget last September that represents the most significant action on climate change that this state has ever taken. And we hope that it raises the bar for other countries to follow suit. Of particular interest to everybody here today is the goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by 2030 with the ultimate target of 85% by 2045. And as we've heard over the last two days, the state's commitment includes significant investments in enteric emissions, the tools and the research. Those investments will be guided by some of the key takeaways that came out of this summit. The first being that food safety must be considered above all. Our partnership with the FDA and their nationwide food safety framework that's already in place is crucial to ensuring this priority. So food safety and effectiveness, right? Safety and effectiveness are both critical components to consumer and producer confidence in California's meat and dairy products. We need more, more scientific data to inform better prediction equations. We have to be able to find ways to study this on a larger scale, to see how these strategies work under real life conditions. And we cannot lose sight of how small farmers can be integrated into this new way of thinking, into this new system. We have to look for opportunities for early adopters we have to be mindful, absolutely must be mindful of the cost of implementation. And we need to do a lot of work 
to make sure that consumer acceptance is there to meet us. But with your dedication, with your knowledge, and your continued innovation, we will build on the work accomplished here on the last two days, finding new ways to address climate change while providing new tools for our dairies and ranchers to continue leading our country in production and quality and taking care of our resources. We know the world is watching to see what we can accomplish here. But this summit gives me a great deal of hope. All the right players are in the room. Everyone wants to collaborate. I heard it. Did you all hear it? Everyone wants to work together. And we have the technical capability and the collective will to tackle this challenge. So thank you again for your time here, for the work that you're doing, and I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you.